everyone. My name is Wing, and today we have our second interview, uh, Mike from Adelshaw Goddard. Welcome, Mike. Hey, good to see you. Well, thank you very much for agreeing to do this interview with us. So before we start, can you maybe give us an introduction of uh, your role and what you do on sort of a day-to-day -day basis? Yeah, sure. Um, so I'm an associate at Adelshaw's, and my role is, is sort of a mixed role at the moment, but the main part of my role is that I run the research and development sort of side of the innovation legal technology team. Mm -hmm. So I'm part of the innovation legal technology team, being a part of that team for quite a few years now, and actually we've grown quite a lot over the last five, six years. Um, so now we're a bit of a bigger team with almost different distinct areas. And I work within that R&D area. So obviously you've had some legal tech involvement. Were you ever a legal technologist or was it sort of a linear path from law school, going to trainee, um, training contract, or was it more sort of hybrid, a bit of legal tech and traditional law? A bit of all of that, <laughs> uh, so a bit of a mix. So grew quite organically. I did, I mean, I did a traditional law degree. I started work at Adelshaw's as a paralegal with that intention to go and become a lawyer. So I was like targeting training contracts, going qualify mm -hmm. and, and doing that route. Um, but the more work I did in the firm, the more I realized that there was an opportunity, there was scope to, to do a lot of this work diff bit differently. Um, so I started to use different tools and just, just trying to make my own life a little bit easier. And at the same time as sort of starting out as paralegal, uh, Kerry, the head of innovation and legal tech at the firm, was setting up this team. So actually, I sort of moved into that team, started to do more and more of that, I guess, didn't really exist then. But I suppose what a legal technologist is now was, was what I was doing then. Uh, five or six years ago and then did have my training contract went and qualified but actually really did want to focus on like legal tech path instead so I did that sort of mixed training contract where I did a lot of it was focused within well how do we drive innovation how do we use tech within the different divisions in the firm as well as doing the all the the classics sort of legal competency skills stuff that you, that you need to do to, to qualify and then qualified into the team um, and now I've had quite a lot of different responsibilities over the years, but now, yeah, focusing on R&D. So it, it sort of grew very organically from an interest into a career path. And it was quite nice. And this job didn't exist until I sort of went through. And we, as a team, quite a small team, we sort of made our own, oh, well, I want to do that. So let's make that as a role and, and go and do that. Um, so a bit of a mix of all the things, but less. There wasn't really the structure or the regimented approach, whereas now, we're trying to build that a little bit more to give people the opportunity to do what we've done. You know, it's interesting that you said that because even in my current role, I didn't really know much about it and I sort of just stepped into it. Do you feel that's probably the case? And perhaps, you know, did you have any misconceptions of legal tech at the time? Or even now, do you see that there's still misconceptions around the legal tech sort of industry? I think at the time, like starting out, I was quite junior and a lot of people who go into like these legal technology roles are quite junior. You almost take it as written that, oh, well, that's the way they do it. So that must be the right way. Um, and I think misconceptions around, oh, well, no one can do the work we do because it's law and it's special. Whereas that's changed a lot over the past few years, because actually there are not necessarily money, but there's a lot of investment in startups mm -hmm. and legal tech companies that actually are now really trying to give lawyers the tools to do that. So actually the job is, is almost easier in the sense that, well, like, we can go and buy stuff that do, do these things now. Um, whereas back then there wasn't really anything on the market and it was much more of a oh, this doesn't feel like the right way to be doing this. How do we make it different? How do we change that? And how do we do it better? So I think at the time I had misconceptions around, well, actually, is this feasible? And, and it was, and it absolutely was. And like, you find really engaged mm -hmm. people and you find people who do want to change and you, you do a lot of work with them and it goes really well. Um, I think now there's almost a misconception that we're, you don't need the lawyers as much. Whereas actually you need them even more now, like you need to work hand in hand with like teams like mine need to work really closely with the legal teams and the, the, the firm. And we have lawyers in our team who are like, um, have practiced for years and have joined our team to sort of help with that. But we also have good relationship with the different people in the, across the firm. And I guess there's a bit of a misconception that we take stuff, we see a problem and take it and go, we're going to fix that problem with tech. And then the lawyer's going to disappear and we don't need them anymore. Where it's much more of a, there's a problem we need to find out what that problem is and we need to dig into the details of that problem, which is what you need the lawyers to do because they're obviously experienced with the problem themselves. Um, and then we can then work with the lawyer to figure out a solution that works for them or for the team or for the, for the firm and then put it into their hands. It's not like a, 
re replacement type job and it's also not a oh i send it to the innovation legal tech team and forget about it for six months and then they come back with something amazing it's very much a collaborative process and i think it's quite a common misconception i think and sometimes we struggle with that in that someone comes with a really good idea and you want to you you have to say well you're going to be involved in this idea like we we're not just going to take it away and do it you're going to be hands-on with this which is what we need and then there, i mean there's other stuff that i won't really talk too much about but there's loads of misconceptions about how effective technology is like how good ai is how good these different machine learning tools are how good you can build um logic trees with like no code automation stuff and that again is quite a common misconception that they're almost less human intervention is needed and things are better than they actually are whereas a lot of the time it's a lot of hard work and it's to make something that helps a person rather than just does a job well despite these misconceptions and what you said about actually lawyers aren't being replaced by robots or ai what is your view on sort of this alternative career path and perhaps Having done that yourself already, what would your advice be people who want to get into legal tech and maybe perhaps even a training contract, if that's still in the back of their mind, you know, sort of your, your views generally about this? I guess I'll start off to say everyone's different. And I do have a personal opinion on this. And actually, mm -hmm. it's very much depends on what you want to, where you want to be and what you want to do. And we have people come through our team who are brilliant and will go on to be that senior legal technologist route and stay in this team and do that route and not think about that qualification route. But then we have people who are just as good who think, do you know what, I would, I want to go away and qualify and I want to go and become a lawyer. And it, it's very much personal choice. It depends what it fits for you. For me, when I was looking at my training contract and sort of staring down the barrel of becoming a lawyer and becoming an NQ in a, in a firm, I didn't see, there wasn't the support that we have now around this type of stuff. So I was very much thinking, well, how do I make this job better? And like, let's say I'm going to go and become a junior commercial associate. How do I make that a better job using some of the things I've learned in this legal technologies role? And actually, if I'd have done that, there wasn't the support. We didn't really have that team. So I thought, well, I will go and do that instead. I will go and be the person that if someone wants to be a junior lawyer and wants to do some of this in their job, they have a support team that can say, well, we can help you do this better and we can give you the tools to, to do this. And I didn't see a career for myself as an as a NQ, as a, as a lawyer. I didn't fit into that sort of mold, really. Um, I didn't want to be doing, I didn't have the passion that I had for this type of stuff, for, for being a practicing solicitor. But some people obviously do, and some people really do want to go into that role, and that's, that's where they, they want to go. I think there's loads of opportunities on our side of the work to, to work within, not even necessarily legal tech as a, as a sort of like a bit of a buzzword name for it, but like this type of work. So just that different approach to legal services. And maybe you work in products for a law firm, maybe you work, you're a data scientist or you've got a tech background and you want to be a software developer, or mm -hmm. you want to do some of that legal technologies work, or you want to focus on, we've got document automation experts. We're looking at things like robotic process automation, where we'll have people coming in. We've got contracting people who focus on how do you d contract in like a digital way, um, as well as that broader legal technologies role. So I think there's a million different jobs you can do for a law firm that isn't a lawyer. And I'm not saying that that has to be a legal tech role, but there's loads of yeah. other ones as well that exist that, that are outside of that. That we sometimes, as an industry, we lose a really bright people sometimes because we say to them, well, you're either a lawyer or you're not anything. Like, why would you work for a law firm? You're not going to be a lawyer. That turns people away at university level. So people finish their degree and think, well, I'm not really, I don't really want to be a lawyer and go and work for a bank or for what, like go any, like go and disappear into a different industry that's not law. Or they do their LPC and or they struggle to get a TC maybe and they don't really, mm -hmm. um, fit the mold that law firms are looking for for lawyers but actually they might be really creative and maybe they could work in legal design or maybe they could work in a business development yeah. team or work in a product team and we don't advertise those roles enough I don't think to our junior people like people coming through university and people coming into the firms like ours we really should be giving them another option that's not a lawyer because I think we lose really good people that would be brilliant for mm -hmm. law firms um, and we end up trying to get the same type of people in all the time. And I'm really pleased and really proud of our team and that we've got a massively, not necessarily different, but like a diverse group of people in the team that a lot of them don't have that, oh, well, I'm not, I never wanted to be a lawyer, but I did want to do something like this. And I think that's really good. And then obviously that's balanced with the people who either are lawyers or are looking to become them in the future. There's a massive range of jobs and it's very much personal preference. I didn't go down that route because I didn't see that as a future for me, but then obviously people are different. 
No, I agree. I think even when I entered into the industry, I had a chat with various other people who are already legal technologists or legal engineers. And, and for some, this type of role, it, it's great. They feel inspired and they are creative and they love it. And it's kind of why we try and cover this in our channel to broaden their awareness of legal tech quite generally. But thank you today for your expertise and your views. It's great. And I hope our viewers enjoy it. But thank you so much for your time. Hope to see you soon at one of our future interviews again. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, thanks very much. Cheers, Wink.